Hey, Shalom on Israel. First off, I'd like to say, Ka Halal, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rakakodash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sincere sisters who watch and believe, Shalom on to you as well. Just back in the spirit with another lesson of exhortation and just um, faith building because we're coming into the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, we're uh, coming into the time of the, the hour of temptation where all are going to be truly tested. And that rings more for men and women who understand this truth. Mainly the men that are on the front lines set up in the uh, lot as the, 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 the apostles, you know, the bishops, the, the teachers, the prophets. So with all being said, you know, a lot of people are having to make uh, major decisions. Uh, pretty much the line is being drawn in the sand. To who's going to basically believe in the powers to be or who's going to have full trust and faith in the Heavenly Father through His Son. So without further ado, I'm going to read a few uh, precepts, Lord willing, this to edify, because I know uh, even within our camp here in Great Millstone, Dallas, certain brothers are uh, receiving notices from their uh, employer saying that, you know, that the poke is going to be mandated. So even me, myself, it's, it's up in the air, but who knows, at the end of the day, the scriptures talk about, and I believe Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, that the servants of the Most High are going to eat. So I, I feel through the spirit that we're going to be okay ultimately, but the scriptures does also say um, through much tribulation, we enter into the kingdom of heaven. So we're going to have to go through a straight gate, you know, uh, brothers that really stand out on faith, we're going to have some... Uh, real critical decisions to make but those decisions are going to pay off man the lord is not going to forsake us you know just like we have the countless examples of our forefathers to read about in these scriptures just to basically help us endure our course but i'll start off here i mean uh and i've been having a lot of issues just loading on my channels lately just satan's being a demon but lord willing you know i'll be able to get this up i'm just trying a different way to record you know through the phone or whatever but i got my computer up just to, to go through the scriptures but i'll start off here in uh jeremiah 17 and verse 5 it says thus said the lord cursed be the man that trusteth in man and make it flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the lord so that's clear to the point it says cursed be the man that trusteth in man and hold up just because you got a lot of uh, scoffers out there They'll try to say, well, we trust in men just because we give reverence and we give double honors to our apostles and elders who taught us this truth. Now, we always qualify that we know that no man, even our apostles and elders who taught us this truth, is going to be able to save us. According to the prophecy, Yahweh Shah, the only begotten son of the heavenly father who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that's the entity that was set up and prophesied to bring salvation to the elect of the nation of Israel. Now, of course, the scriptures talk about iron sharpening iron. You know, as a body, as a collective body of, of brothers, we do help each other along our, our journey and in our walk of faith. But ultimately, we got to put our trust in the, in the Heavenly Father through His Son. I'll read it again. Jeremiah 17 and 5, it says, Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm. And when you go into that word arm, it means your strength. It means your power. Especially two-thirds of the nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you've put your faith uh, wholeheartedly into this system, man. You've been so beat down by just all the oppression that you just fully accept it. You don't have any type of backbone. You don't have any type of standard. You don't have faith at the end of the day, you know? The scripture says that the just shall live by faith. So it says, and make it flesh his arm, meaning carnal things. And it says, in whose heart, and heart goes back uh, to the Hebrew word la'ab, which means your mind. It says, in whose heart departed from the Lord. So we already know two-thirds are, are pursuing to the prophecy in Zechariah, the 13th chapter. They're going to have to be cut off on this side because they don't have any faith. They don't have any trust in the Heavenly Father. They want to trust in their oppressive enemy, Esau, Edom. They want to trust in this democratic uh, system, man, 
which is nothing but a socialism. Uh, it's basically just bringing socialism. A lot of people are just cool with just receiving checks and just sitting on their ass at home, man. Now, of course, brothers that have awakened to this truth, we put on a rulership uh, mindset. So we don't uh, enjoy working and, and having to be uh, a subject to an employer working for wages. But we understand that at this appointed time, we're in our captivity right now. So we do just enough to get our daily bread, but we're not putting our trust in this system, man. At the end of the day, Great Babylon is about to be destroyed. The scriptures talk about in Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, that the grind is going to cease. So pretty soon it ain't going to be no, no, no jobs for nobody in Great Babylon, man. All these jobs are going to be done, done away with, you know. So the level up and the preparation starts now, man. And these tests are going to come for all of us. We're going to all be tested, man. But our people, two-thirds, man, they don't even have no fight in them, man. They've just completely surrendered to the damn devil. And this is no different than, you know, in the ancient world. I'm going to read Isaiah 30. And, re and when you read in Isaiah the 30, 30th chapter, it's basically talking about the nation of Israel uh, going to the Egyptians for help against the Assyrians. But you can apply these scriptures. The scriptures are multifold. The scripture says in Revelation 11 that we're in spiritual uh, Sodom in Egypt. So Babylon the Great, which is America, it has the same spirit of, of ancient Egypt, man. That's why we always go into, when you look on the back of your dollar bill, there's a pyramid, man. And a lot of these customs that these uh, higher ups on the left hand side, it all goes back to Babylonian and, and Egyptian uh, deities, man, and idols. So this place has the same exact spirit of ancient Egypt. And of course, the Lord's people, the Israelites, we were brought in hardcore bondage in this land. And we still in bondage under our oppressor until this day. That's why it's necessary that there's going to have to be a, a savior to deliver us. But I'm going to read it, man. Because this damn devil, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, ain't going to deliver you, man. He ain't never had nothing uh, that's suited for your best interest. Including this damn cocktail that he's trying to make everybody to take. And we have to measure our words accordingly because they just removing channels left and right, man. But I'm going to read the scripture before I ramble on too much, man. I'm just in the spirit right now. This is Isaiah 30 and 1. It says, Woe, and woe is an old Quaker English word that means uh, destruction. It says, Woe to the rebellious children. Talking about you Israelites. Stiff-necked, hard-hearted children. That refuse to come back to their, their true power. It says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. And that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So it says that our people take counsel, but not of the Lord. And that cover with the covering, but not of my spirits. Because a covering is a hedge of protection. We're hoping at the end of the day that the Most High through His Son, Yahweh Shah, is going to show us mercy. So we'll be covered from all of this destruction and judgment that's to come. But our people, they look unto Esau, Edom, spiritual and modern day Egypt for a covering. Which that's all going to be a trap and a snare for trusting after this damn devil, man. Right now it's the cocktail, but we know that everything is being built up so they can... Uh, Force the world as we know it to accept that mark, which we know is the RFID microchip. And I'll just leave it at that because, like I said, Esau Edom, you know, he's coming with great wrath because he knows he has a short time pursuant to Revelation 12. So they're removing channels left and right. These algorithms are, are mightily at play right now, man. But it's still not going to stop the spirit of the Lord ultimately. And it says, finishing off verse 1, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit. That they may add sin to sin. And sin on top of sin on top of sin. That's iniquity. And the wages of sin is death. So pretty much Esau, Edom, the powers to be. They basically perpetuate uh, uh, death styles. They perpetuate a, a, a life of sin, man. Setting up ways for our people to go off against their power. So we're supposed to trust in the Heavenly Father, man. If we do get ill with any type of sickness, man, 
the scriptures talk about, you know, uh, prayer and, and using the certain herbs. And the Lord at the end of the day is the one who's going to show mercy. He's the author of, 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 of life and death, man. So if the most high wants you to be, uh, if, if he wants you to be uh, well, if he wants you to be whole, because that's what's the opposite of sick is being whole. If he wants you to be whole, you're going to be whole. But if the most high wants you to be sickly, it ain't going to be no stopping it. Whatever you decide to, to put in your, your body, man. It says, verse 2, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. And the modern day Pharaoh is, is the Esau Edom, the rulership that's in power. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And it says, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. So our people wholeheartedly trust in, in Egypt, man. So a lot of our people, even uh, so-called brothers in this truth, man, when their back is going to be completely against the wall, they may make an unwise decision that can lead to their downfall. And I'm not exempt from that either as I speak, you know, during the lesson. That's why the scriptures talk about you have to examine yourself. We have to constantly examine ourselves whether we be in this faith. Verse 3, it says, Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. So our people, they're going to be in a shameful state for trusting in the strength of this world. The modern day Pharaoh is the, the elites that's in power. And it says, in the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Because at the end of the day, the reason that our people are into all of these different philosophies, reading all of these different books, is because they're looking for answers, man. Our people are in a state of perplexity. The whole world as we know it is looking for answers. Everyone's in a state of confusion and perplexity. But all through the spirit of the Heavenly Father, through His Son, through this word, the prophets have the answers, man. The teachers shall not be removed into a corner anymore, like the scripture says in this same book, in, the, in, in Isaiah 30, if you go down to the 20th verse. So the trust in the shadow of Egypt is going to uh, lead our people to a trap. Because the scripture says in, in the Apocrypha, in, I believe, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, the 12th chapter, it says, never trust thine enemy, man. So just because the scriptures also says that a gift destroys the heart, just because Esau Edom has allowed you to get certain advantages. You've been stimulated through these stimulus packages, you know, all of these unemployment benefits. For now, if you 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 complicit and you take the cocktail, you can keep your employment. Everything seems all good. It seems like the damn devil has your best interests in mind, but these are all snares and traps. Because ultimately Esau Edom, we going to he wants to establish a new world order. And the Most High has Esau Edom in the trick bag because the, the prophets, the men of faith, we know that the Heavenly Father is in control of everything. And even the power and the strength that Esau has is because the Most High gave it to him. I'll read this scripture and I'll end out the, the short lesson. This is uh, Proverbs 25 and 19. It says confidence. And when you go into that word confidence, it means with faith. Confidence or having faith. It says confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble. And we're in a time of trouble. We're in the beginning of sorrows. We're in the time of Jacob's trouble. It says confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. So a broken tooth, you can't eat nothing if you got a broken tooth. If you got a foot that's out of joint, you can't take a solid step. You ain't going to be able to plant. You're not going to be firmly planted. You're not going to be stable, man. Those are useless things right there. There, A broken tooth and a foot out of joint. You can't work with that, man. Those things are invaluable. And Esau Edom, he's being proven to be invaluable, man. This so-called government, man, they don't got no answers. They, they just winging it. They coming up with things and moving the goalposts on the fly. And these useless eaters, these sheep will eat it up. But in a time of trouble, which that's the time that we're in, in an evil time, you can't put your faith in an, in an unfaithful man. When historically his legacy is to always say one thing, but do the exact opposite, being a hypocrite. So for those that can receive and believe this truth, man, 
it's time to put your faith and your trust heavily more and more in the heavenly father if you without faith if your faith is weak pray for more strength and faith man that the most high guides you man even in the times where you you pressed up against the wall if you stand uh solid for the name of the heavenly father you got to have faith that he's going to make a way now it may not always uh seem easy at that particular time but the most high he's going to lift the standard man when it seems impossible to just get through this course to endure it to the end until Yahweh Shah returns. So with all being said, brothers, we all have difficult choices to make. But just understand that the Most High is going to raise a standard and he's not going to forsake us, man. It says in Romans, the 15th chapter, the things which are written aforetime were written for our learning. So we got countless examples of our forefathers prevailing. Or if they had to die, they died manfully. And we know through the scriptures that there's no uh, such thing as death, man. The spirit always goes back to the heavenly father, man. We understand that we're going to come back even if we have to so-called die on this side. So we got a lot to stand up for, man, in the face of all this adversity. So I'll end out the short lesson with that. Lord willing, it's edified. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah. By Shimra Kakadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.